Hi, I'm Tony Russo, and this is In Case You Missed It from Kate Spoilston for the week ending Friday, September 6th, 2024. There were two really interesting acquisitions this week, and I wanted to talk about them right off the top. Uh, the first one that I heard about was uh, the Foundation Partners acquiring Cake, and that is really first a uh, big deal, and second, a uh, of course they, of course they did. Um, Cake and Lantern are two of the really big kind of independent end of life planning websites, and the question has always been how are they going to be useful? And the answer is they're going to be useful in the hands of a funeral company who can make better decisions about the information that's being shared. If you're not familiar, um, Cake is a company that encourages people to start planning their funeral. So people go in and what kind of music do you want? What kind of casket do you want? Do you want a casket? Do you want cremation? Do you want aquamation? Do you want human composting? It's, it's a way to get people familiar with all of their options and all of their options and then to kind of package that. But, you know, the step two of it was always a little um, confusing because there was no, there was no, you know, fee to, to do this. There were ads. So it, there, there was some ad support. But I think now we see that finally someone found the right number to tell them to come under their wings. I expect to do a story on this. I know that there will be a feature in the November American Funeral Director about the Foundation Partners aspect of it. I'm also hoping to speak with the owners of Cake and talk about their decision to sell and what is next, if they're going to stay on, if they're going to create new things. There is a there is a press release and it is as clear as press releases news releases, excuse me, tend to be. Um, so I hope to get more of the story for you in the next couple of weeks and definitely we'll have some interesting aspects of the story in the November American Funeral Director if we don't have it anywhere else first. The other really interesting acquisition was Batesville, which picked up a company called Halcyon Death Care Management Solutions, which is a funeral home management system. What's really interesting about this is um, is that Batesville has already kind of been expanding its digital offerings to its clients. The websites have been been more prevalent and their digital solutions on the back end for casket orderings and things I've done features on this um, have already been moving in a very kind of digital forward way. So this acquisition not only makes sense, but we expect to see more of it. That is, um, I, I am, I'm under the understanding, I'm under the impression that there are a more announcements to come about this particular merger in general. And we hope to have plenty on that in an October edition of Funeral Service Insider. I'm hoping to speak with Sarah Gard, who is one of the owners and the founder of the company. And I want to talk to her about her decision not only to do you know what she did with this software management system but then you know why was now the right time to get involved with these bigger companies um i i kind of see a you know a, a lot of these smaller smaller companies are looking for ways up and through and i wouldn't be shocked to see another couple announcements before the year is over from smaller companies that you probably have heard of becoming parts of larger companies that you definitely have heard of. And when I hear of it, you'll hear of it <laughs> on, uh, on, on Funeral Service Insider or on the In Case You Missed It page. And you can always go to In Case You Missed It, the In Case You Missed It section of katesboylston.com or the Industry News of Kate Spoil section of katesboylston.com. And that's where we'll have all of the um, things that you need to stay up to date on what's going on. So this is both sad and 
weird news. And before you see it in your own weird news feed, <laughs> let me be the first to tell you about it. There was a theft of a casket in Las Vegas, Nevada. And the casket had a body in it. And the, the woman, they, they caught the person uh, who, who took the casket, left the body outside of the funeral home. Um, according to the reporting, nothing nothing has been done with the casket. There, there's no reporting on what happened to the casket. And that's, you know, that's what, what kind of confuses me. Um, so this, this person, uh, uh, it, it has turned, it has, it has been revealed was on, on, uh, on drugs and was blacking out or had blacked out. So didn't remember smashing through the funeral home door and pulling the casket out or dumping the body or disappearing. I, I just, it bothers me. Where is the casket? Like, is it in her front yard? Is it in her apartment? Did she wake up from a blackout with a casket and think to herself, you know, where did this come from? Um, in the reporting, which is the links in the show notes, actually the police show her the video and she's like, yeah, that, that, <laughs> that was me. But I don't remember doing that. Um, she's being held on like $11,000 bond. Hopefully, Everybody, you know, gets all the help they need. Hopefully the family is not too traumatized by it. But it's just so, so strange. Mass burials have resumed on Hart Island in New York. We reported on this earlier this year. We may have also reported on it last year. Um, Hart Island is uh, New York City's mass grave. There are more than a million people who have been buried there since the late 1800s. And for the most part, it was run by the prisons. Many prisoners, former prisoners, were buried there. And when we reported on it last time, there had been a dust up about the way that the remains were treated or the difficulty in finding the remains. And so in recent times, the the uh, running of Hart Island has been turned over to the Human Resources Administration, and people are complaining that they're not doing a great job. There's really quite a touching story about a woman, you know, who went to where they told her her father was, and she said her very, very sad goodbyes. And then um, they said, oh, I'm sorry, this isn't the right place. And they took her to the right place. And, you know, he, cathartic is a is a one-time thing. And whether or not you're standing over your father's actual body, I don't know if it matters in the long term, but to hear you weren't and then to be brought to where your father's body really is, that's that's tough. Um, they are looking for solutions. Now, New York doesn't allow for aquamation and New York City doesn't allow for crematories. And it's one of those dual states where a funeral home can't have a crematory. And they are looking to make an allowance that when natural organic reduction finally comes to New York, it might be something that funeral homes can do as well as cemeteries. And there's a fight brewing over that, and I'm sure it'll be interesting to watch. But it's it's just again, it's it's tough. It's tough that, you know, I'm 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 a big fan of of acclimation. I think that I've not been secretive about that. I don't I don't see the, you know, the evils and the terrors that everyone else sees. I see a really easy way to dispose of a body without having to have a crematory if a crematory is against the law. Uh, another story that I just, I didn't bother running, running, but it's it's in the in case you missed it and i wasn't going to talk about it but i was but i will now um in baltimore they just changed the zoning to ban a crematory and funeral home and the rewritten law is like literally says <laughs> no crematories it's like you can put up anything you want as long as it's not a crematory and i don't i i think that as people move away from you know, burial and toward alternative or what used to be called um, or what has been called, I guess, alternative methods of disposition to have states so locked into burial that they can't see beyond to other more 
economical options, options that make more sense. New York City is huge. I don't need to remind anyone that during COVID, they were shipping bodies all over the place to get cremated because they just didn't have the capacity. And apparently they've not learn that lesson because their plan is just to start burying them for caskets deep. And that's something I'm not necessarily against. I know that it's, it's a, it's a touchy situation. I know that there are places in Europe where you rent the, you you rent the ground that you're buried in. And that's because they've been burying people for, you know, 1200 more years than we were, than we have. But it's something it's something that's got to give. And I think Heart Island is going to end up being a study in denial about what it takes to bury indigents in a city the size of New York. And I mean, it's New York City. It's not it's not Del Mar where I live. You know, we I'm sure we have a plan for indigents that doesn't require its own island in the middle of Long Island Sound. But that's where that's where it stands right now. There's a the great story from the city dot NYC website, and I would read it. I'd say I'll link to it in the show notes. It's absolutely worth the read. It's well written. And I think it's a pretty comprehensive look at what's going on at Heart Island and some of the challenges that they expect to see going forward. And finally, just a fun in case you missed it. Uh, I love to come across these stories. There's a gentleman named Alan Harl Jr. And he is celebrating his 70th year um, working in funeral service. He started as uh, an actual child. He is 88. He started when he was 18. And his whole approach has been to just work at this family adjacent funeral home so his grandmother was related to the people who own glenn family services and again there'll be a a link in the show notes and uh, his mother died when he was 12 and the funeral home kind of adopted him not not adopted him adopted him but just took care of him kind of took him in and he's just been there the whole time and now he acts as an advisor to the owner and uh, he still he does still does uh, services and things like that. So again, link in the show notes. There's a cute little picture that goes with it if you follow the link all the way through. And that will do it for this week. Funeral Service Insider, in case you missed it, is a Kate Spoilston production. It was written, edited, and videoed by me. Tony Russo, please check out the show notes where you can get links to all the stories I mentioned and maybe some that I didn't. And um, I always link it to the in case you missed it section of katesboylston.com in case something happens between now and the time that you see this. As always, please follow us wherever you're watching now or listening now. If you're listening on the podcast, please select our feed on your favorite podcatcher. I'm going to have a couple bonus special episodes coming up. Some quick 15 minute interviews with industry people. That's half to promote um, our event coming up on November 12th in Houston, 12th and 13th and half to kind of get a conversation started about some of these, you know, direct kind of business topics right here on Funeral Service Insider, actually on Funeral Service Insider, the podcast. So please keep your eyes out for that. And until next time, I'm Tony Russo, and this has been In Case You Missed It from Kate Spoilston.